This is a Burroughs Class 3 adding machine from the 1920s. It has a full keyboard that can input seven digits, a register at the bottom under glass, and a real fancy printing mechanism. We got a hard metal case and a heavy duty crank. It's about two feet long and weighs 28 pounds. For you kids out there, that means if you wanted to stretch from here to the moon using only, ah, forget it. This is my 10th video about calculating machines, so I had to do something special. In my opinion, the Burroughs Class 3 is one of the most iconic adding machines of all time. If I asked you to envision in your mind an early 20th century adding machine, you'd probably think of something like this. I could say it's a pretty standard machine for the time, and it was, but that's because it is the standard for machines of the time. It was the flagship product of the top manufacturer in the industry. This thing is like the Model T Ford or the green glass Coke bottle. The Burroughs Adding Machine Company dominated the market in adding machines for basically the entire lifespan of the industry. Their main strategy was to buy competitors and rebrand their products. The Class 3 was one of those acquisitions. In 1909, Burroughs bought a small player called the Pike Adding Machine Company. The Pike Company was making this machine, the Pike Adding Machine. Burroughs bought the company, changed it around a little bit. They took off that ridiculous dial right in the middle, and turned it into the Burroughs Class 3. Every Burroughs machine at that time had a unique sequential serial number stamped onto it. Mine says 3757587. The 3 means it's a Class 3, and the 757587 means it was literally the 757,000th 587th machine made by Burroughs. You can look those numbers up and my serial number places this as being manufactured between January and November of 1922. The way it works is basically the same as the big Victor machine I described in my first video. You can click over to that one if you want to see more details. Each column represents a digit and you type in numbers one at a time and you pull the crank to add them. So if I want to do 488 plus 983 I do the 488, then the 983. After each addition, you can see the running total in the register down at the bottom. Every time you pull the crank, the number you're adding gets printed up here. If you want the total to print, you do an extra crank and then crank it while holding the total button. This also resets the machine to zero so you can do your next addition. You can use the subtotal button to print the total without resetting it to zero. This non-add button will print out a number without adding it into the total and the repeat switch can be used for reasonably fast multiplication. Class 3 has some nice design features that you don't see on the old Victor machine, and you'll only notice if you look carefully. Here's a great feature. The crank has a quick release mechanism on the side. You just push this little thing here and it pulls right out. Apparently people would remove the handle if they were in the middle of something and had to leave their desk. This was called jank in the crank. Actually, I just made that up. This is a simple way to make sure nobody messes up your calculation, since you can't change or clear the total without turning the crank. Unfortunately, you see a lot of machines now that are missing the crank, I guess because it's so easy to take off. Like any other printing and cranking adding machine, it's a pleasure to use. The crank pulls nicely, and you can feel the gears turning inside. On some machines, you had to push the handle back up after you pull it down. This one really springs back nicely. It's a bit more clickety than the Victor, which I would describe as crunchety. Anyway, it makes the sound of accounting in the 1920s. They say if you put your ear to the case while you turn the crank, you can hear the gold standard. This is the machine that built American capitalism, and it still has a certain gravitas to it today. It's got that echo of history to it. It's hard to believe that the domineering company who made it isn't still around. In the 1950s, Burroughs realized that electronics would soon make all their machines irrelevant, so they started making computers. As usual, they broke into that market by buying another company, this time an outfit called Electrodata. 
They made a pretty great machine in the 50s called the B205. It had a control panel with 1950s futuristic blinking lights and a big reel-to-reel -reel tape storage unit. It looks so cool, actually, that it appeared in lots of Hollywood science fiction productions. See if you can recognize it. This one still says Burroughs right on it. Burroughs eventually merged with some other computer companies, and now it's officially part of a company called Unisys. So a piece of the Burroughs company is still around, but it's lost the relevance that it had in its youth. It's kind of like an old Hollywood star. Yeah, like Kurt Russell. He was a big action star in his 20s and 30s. He was even a star when he was a kid. Who can forget the 1969 Disney film, The Computer Wore Tennis Shoes? Kurt Russell was a college kid who gets zapped by a computer and becomes super intelligent. Here's a quote from Wikipedia. The film received mixed reviews. But Kurt Russell still gets good roles every so often. And that computer that zapped him? It was a Burroughs machine.